Within 9 to the 1 we have a, a classic uh, cocktail bar, we have British uh, dining, which means focusing on British products, but modern European cooking, there's yep. a wine bar going on, but my favorite part is this table. So what have you got to taste for us? Dawson, beautiful fresh goat cheese, uh, matured with, uh, or preserved with ash, which we will make to mature in nice and crumbly in the middle, but runny on the outside. Mm -hmm. An Irish cheese, Adrahan, is one of those, well, non-smelly cheeses. We yeah. refer to a Wasran cheese. A good um, smelly sock cheese. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> the more smelly, the better they are. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then traditional British blue cheese for the much more punchy flavors. Great, all right. And what are we going to match those with? Yeah, I think one wine is never going to be enough. Of course not. Not because so. I'm greedy, but it's more about gastronomy. Um, Miguel Chiarlo, Piemontese mm -hmm. uh, uh, Arnais, from the Ruro Arnais. I think the most famous and very popular nowadays. I think it's a bit body, more interesting, actually. The body, the, fresh, the freshness, uh, aromatics, mm -hmm. and the unknown factor is Exactly. Nice. And then something else which is happening a lot nowadays, the world is becoming so small. Uh, Argentinian soil, sun, amazing. Yeah. One of them, the Cuvelier family, Malbec mainly, about 65%. Um, Coming in Sauvignon Melo, Petit mm -hmm. Bordeaux, and a touch of Shiraz. You're right, it's lovely. On the nose, it's got that really jammy, very fruit forward. But then on the palate, it's actually much more restrained than you expect yeah. it to be. Yeah. It promised to be a new world wine, but then you finish up drinking something pretty much old world. This is the du Irish Dutch yeah. one. I'm getting a little Okay, I'm gonna eat that by itself, actually. With the red, you think? I think with the red, yeah. that's, that's beautiful. You can, it's still because it's, it tastes like, like the milk. Mm -hmm. Still, and that's the beauty, I think, of, uh, of mm. a proper Dutch cheese. Mm. So the fruitiness mm -hmm. of, a, of a light aromatic white wine would work as well. Yeah. Of those cheeses where you can have both. And that's why I say one wine is never enough. <laughs> it's not, it's true. Let me, let me get the whiskey. So one is finished in a Madeira cask yeah. and the other one in a port cask. Oh, nice. Why don't we have the uh, Quinta Ruben finished in a port cask. So finished in a port cask, so when you finish something in a cask that has had another alcohol in it beforehand, it tends to pick up a lot of the notes of that alcohol. So a lot of times whiskey will be finished in a bourbon cask, will age in a bourbon cask. It'll pick up a little bit of bourbon notes, in this case a port cask. So it should pick up hopefully some of the sweetness, some of the characteristics mm -hmm. of the port that was previously in the same cask. If you want to lift a bit of the flavors, if it's a bit too too tough on the alcohol, yes, you yeah. put a few drops of water. Or right. But there's no right and wrong. I think people should drink their drinks the way they like it. This is absolutely gorgeous on the nose. And I think whiskey, um, you know, particularly single malt whiskies, have a real reputation for being sort of a man's drink, sitting around in a, you know, in a, in a robe, in a smoking jacket and a cigar, you know, puts hair on your chest kind of drink. And some of it, I must admit, some of it for me is like that. It's just a bit too much. But these really, really smooth styles, the really fine whiskies, are absolutely beautiful. It's for everybody. Cheers. Prost.